Hey, how's it going everyone? It's me, it's Conjunsula, and welcome to today's Pokemon Go discussion video. So today I wanted to put a spotlight on raid hours in Pokemon Go. More specifically, I wanted to talk about how this weekly feature has been the backbone for Pokemon Go's success over the past several years. I really do think that when it comes to raid hours, there's a lot of things that Niantic has done really well with this particular feature, as well as there are a couple of things that Niantic could do to improve it moving forward. I'm going to be talking about all of this in today's video, so let's roll the intro and get right into it. Okay, let's get right into it. So, in my opinion, one of the core fundamental aspects of Pokemon Go's gameplay has always been raiding. Ever since raiding was first introduced, it was probably the one way that most players were able to engage with Pokemon Go's endgame. Before raiding, there was gym battles, but there really wasn't any form of gameplay that allowed you to utilize all of your most powerful Pokemon in a way that was very rewarding, and in general, a very satisfying way. But like most MMORPGs, raiding was the endgame content that most players were looking for. If you had yourself a really good collection of Pokemon that you wanted to show off in some way, then raiding was a good way for you to do that. And it can't be understated, but raiding was a great way for communities to come together. Beforehand, it was all about gym battles and controlling gyms, but now it was all about coordinating with your local communities in order to take down some of the hardest raid bosses that you could encounter. But of course, the massive buzz around this form of gameplay wouldn't last long within the Pokemon Go community. Inevitably, this core feature would see a decline within the Pokemon Go player base, which not only would reduce player activity, but it would also cut into Niantic's revenue as well. This sort of decline would have marked the end of Pokemon Go as we know it. If players lost interest in raiding, then they would probably stop playing the game altogether, as there wasn't much else the game was offering at the time in terms of gameplay. A decline in a core feature like raiding would most certainly be the thing that kills Pokemon Go. Now this decline was for a lot of different reasons. Before the existence of raid hours and remote raid passes, it was really difficult for you to obtain legendaries through legendary raid battles if you were not part of a Discord or a Facebook group of some kind. This is of course because it required a certain number of trainers in order to defeat those raid bosses, and you need to find those legendary raids when they hatch to begin with. This made raiding a pretty inaccessible feature for most players, especially for those who live in rural areas where the number of Pokemon Go players would be limited to begin with. Overall, it was really hard for the average player to keep up with the most hardcore players. And considering for the longest time that raiding was one of the most primary sources for revenue for Niantic, they needed to come up with something to get players interested in raiding once again. This is when Niantic introduced raid days into Pokemon Go. These half day long events were kind of like community days, only they were specifically tied to a whole bunch of raiding. Basically, for about 6 hours, you would see nothing but one particular legendary spawning in just about every single gym as a raid battle. Local communities would coordinate for massive raid trains for these particular days, and they would go and try to complete as many of these raid battles as they possibly could. This was a great way for both casual and hardcore players to get a whole bunch of a particular legendary, whether or not they were looking for the candies to max out one of their best ones, or if they were looking for those elusive perfect IVs. Now for a time, these were extremely popular events. A lot of players would look forward to these raid days, and they were extremely lucrative for Niantic. But of course, like community days, these particular events had different flaws. They typically happened on a Saturday or a Sunday of every month, and that meant a lot of players may not necessarily be able to participate in them for various reasons. And since we also had a community day every single month, this led to something that not a lot of players really experience anymore, and it is, of course, event fatigue. Players were essentially forced to plan around two big events every single month, and that could get really taxing and really tiresome, especially for community leaders who are trying to coordinate raid groups as well as community day meetups. I think at the time Niantic was fully aware that raid days were a great idea, but on execution, there were a lot of flaws that were really hard to overcome. 
After several raid days and a few months of a bunch of legendary raids, Niantic introduced this idea of having a lunchtime raid hour every so often. The concept was pretty simple. It was basically going to be the exact same gameplay as raid days, but it would only last for one hour during the lunch period of particular days that they announced. At first, the reaction to this was kind of mixed. A lot of players did not have a lot of free time during their lunch periods, and a lot of other players were frustrated that they had to give up their lunch hours in order to utilize these events to their fullest extent. But in spite of these particular flaws, this was a novel idea that laid the foundation for what would become legendary raid hours that we get today. I think it goes underappreciated, but Niantic really did work at getting these raid hours to a perfect point. They collected a lot of feedback from players on what would be the best hours to run these particular raid hours, and they wanted to see what frequency players would actually do them. Eventually, they landed on having every single Wednesday be a raid hour between the hours of 6 o'clock and 7 o'clock local time. Now, in my opinion, this has been one of the best things to happen to Pokemon Go. Not only is this a great way for Niantic to get a steady stream of revenue to keep Pokemon Go active, but it's a happy medium for those who really enjoyed raid days but also wanted to keep it a little bit more casual. At least in my local community, we've been able to get a good number of trainers every single legendary raid hour, regardless if the legendary is relevant or not. These particular players may not necessarily play the game as hardcore throughout the week, but at least for raid hours, they come out in order to collect the candies of the particular legendary, or at the very least, collect rare candies. What's also funny is that a vast majority of these particular players do not actually belong in any Discord or Facebook group, they just kind of show up to the heavily populated areas expecting for there to be raids to be completed. This relieves a lot of pressure for a lot of players to join Discords and Facebook groups in order to feel included. Basically speaking, the fact that there is an expected time where a lot of people are going to be out raiding in specific locations allows for a lot more inclusivity when it comes to legendary raids. So yeah, overall, I really think that legendary raid hours every Wednesday has been one of the best things to happen to Pokemon Go in the longest time. And the best part is, it's not even required gameplay. It's not like you're going to be missing out if you do not participate in raid days, but for those of you who do, it is extremely rewarding and it is a great way for you to get ahead by collecting some of the best legendaries and mythicals and collecting all the candy that you would need in order to max them out. But of course, just like those raid days from back in the day, legendary raid hours do run the risk of becoming stale over time. I think it goes without saying that raid hours is in need of something new and something fresh to spice it up and get players more motivated to actually participate. Recently, we saw Niantic dabble with the idea of having different rewards for completing raids in person. I'm of course talking about the recent introduction of Rare Candy XL as a raid reward for doing in-person raids. While it's not perfect, I think this is a great start, and it's something that Niantic should continue to build upon. Like for me myself personally, I've been actively participating in several raid hours for the past several months, mainly because I want to farm up as much Rare Candy XL as I possibly can. So something that I would like to see Niantic explore even more is having exclusive rewards that you could only get if you participate in the weekly raid hours. I'm not too sure what that could entail, but I'm pretty sure Niantic's think tank could come up with something. Now another idea that I've seen thrown around is of course the idea of having additional rewards for chain raiding different raid bosses. Like for example, if you do several raids in a row within a certain period of time, you would get additional rare candies and additional stardust and experience so long as you do those raids in succession within a short period of time. Something like this would definitely increase the activity of raid days because it would most certainly motivate players to go out to high populated areas during these specific times. Considering that the casual audience as well as the hardcore audience wants to utilize these raid hours to their fullest potential, well, this would most certainly incentivize and motivate players to go out every single Wednesday. But yeah, just in general, a lot of these improvements could be applied to raiding as a whole, and I would like to see some more stuff being added in the future. It wasn't too long ago that Niantic introduced the achievement feature that you see at the end of every single raid battle, and I would like to see them do even more things with with this particular feature. 
As of right now, it's really just for bragging rights, but I would really like to see certain rewards tied to them, especially for players who are really dedicated to their craft and are frequently featured in this way. I really do think the foundation is there right now for some exciting gameplay. Considering that raiding is the backbone of Pokemon Go right now, Niantic should really dedicate a lot of resources to improve raiding and raid hours so that it could last for years to come. But in any case, yeah, that's going to be the end of this discussion video. I would love to know your thoughts regarding raid hours and raiding down below. Is this something that you would like to see improved moving forward? Or do you believe that raid hours is in a good place? Let me know down below and let's have a great discussion. And if you ended up enjoying this video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if it's your first time here. And don't forget that little bell so you stay up to date on whenever I upload videos. And I wanna give a quick shout out out to my patrons on Patreon. You make this channel content possible. If you want to support my channel in any way, then do consider checking out the links in the description below. But yeah, that's going to be it. I'm Count Jinsula. Be safe, have fun, love yourself, and I'll catch you all later.